Tabi Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillah falamudillalah. Wa man yudlil falahadiyalah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad abdullahi wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. نواصل إن شاء الله تعالى من كراعتنا من كتاب وجاء شهر رمضان لشيخنا عبد الرزاق البدر حفظه الله ورأه ويكونتين إن شاء الله تعالى ويفريد رمضان يسكم باي شيخ عبد الرحمن يعني شيخ عبد الرزاق البدر ما الله بريزافهم I remind each and everyone the hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu wassalam that comes in Sahih Muslim when the Messenger alayhi salatu wassalam told us he said مَا أَجْتَمَا أَكَوْمٍ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزْرَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَخَشِيَتَهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ إِنْدَى There's no people who gather in the house from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning the book of Allah or reminding one another of the book of Allah, of Allah himself, except إِلَّا نَزْرَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ Except يعني, Allah's mercy falls on His people, tranquility befalls them. إِلَّا نَزْرَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَخَشِيَتَهُمْ رَحْمَةِ And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers them. And Allah makes mention of these people, like how these people are يعني, mentioning and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah, نَسْأَلُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَنْ نَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُخْلِصِينَ Then Allah makes us from the sincere people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from the people who understand and benefit and implement what we learn. And we ask Allah to teach us and to benefit us. Ameen. Walillah alhamd, we have passed or we have reached the middle, yani, wasat al Ramadan. And this, yani, upon the Muslim, when these mawasim reach us, when these seasons like the Ramadan comes to us, a Muslim, لازم يتدبر فيها They have to ponder about this and ask themselves what they have done. Because هذه الأيام تمر بسرة These days they go quick. يعني يمر بسرة إلا ولو تجد At the end, we'll find ourselves at the end. We'll find ourselves at the end soon. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from the people who benefit as much as we can from this great month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes us from the people who are alhamdulillah sincere when it comes to this month of Ramadan. As we say, these sittings shouldn't be sittings that are just there for, for show or hakada. Rather, they should be sittings that when our sincerity is raised. And our khashya in Allah, our fear in Allah is also raised. Now, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala to make us from the people alhamd, that Allah is pleased with. Ameen. <coughs> <coughs> so, in our, few, in our dars al-maadhi, fi dars al-maadhi akhadna shay'an min al-dunub wa akhadna shay'an min al-istighfar. We spoke of istighfar in this month of Ramadan. And we spoke about what the author, yani what the, the people who compiled this book said about in relation to one seeking forgiveness. And we said seeking forgiveness, yani we mentioned that, yani we said tawbah to nasuha. This month is a month of tawbah. It's a month of repentance. Yani a person comes clean in this month. We said, هذا شهر شهر التوبة من من الشهور. It's from the names that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم identified this month to be شهر التوبة, the month of توبة النصوحة, sincere repentance, sincere repentance. So he said, فه فشهر رمضان موسى كبير من المواسم التوبة إلى الله. As the what is written in the book here, it says that شهر رمضان, the month of Ramadan. Is a great season and a big season نعم, that brings about or يعني, implements a tawbah. I mean, a person should bring, come with tawbah towards Allah, seek repentance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla wa ala. And the, he says here that we anticipate or we come to this month with repentance. Nasuhin. Nasuhin mean tawbah, sincere repentance. Min kulli dunub wal khati'ati. Naam, he says, and also from every sin that we do and all the mistakes that we come, we come with. Wallahu Jalla Allah, 
لا يقبل التوبة على من الإباد إلا إذا كانت نصوحا. Then he says here that Allah subhanahu wa taala does not accept repentance. He doesn't accept repentance unless it is sincere. Unless it is sincere. وتوبة النصوحة لابد أن يتوافر فيها شروط ثلاثة. Then he brings the meaning of what he means when he says توبة النصوحة, which we took in the previous stars. He said that توبة النصوحة, Allah will not accept repentance unless it is sincere. So everything a person does in this dunya, now remember stems from insincerity. Allah told us in the Quran, وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين. Indeed, we were not commanded except to worship Allah sincerely. So a person needs to take sincerity is very important thing. Sincerity, ikhlas. La buddha ta'ati bil ikhlas. Kullu shay ya'ati bil ikhlas. So same thing with repentance. For us to anticipate this month or go through this month of Ramadan and we want Allah to forgive us, we have to be sincere. And look, I mean, it's difficult, subhanAllah, you know, for the people to wake up for the Fajr prayer, for people to take the suhoor, for people to do all of these things. But if a person is sincere, that's why even Rajab al hanbal used to say, or some of the Salaf used to say, if you see a person, if a person is not sincere, if, a, if tell the people, if you're not sincere, you're wasting your time. If you are not sincere, you are wasting your time. And we ask Allah that we are from the sincere, we sincere people, I mean. So yeah, he's going to explain to us what does he mean when he comes with the statement, At-Tawbah to Nasuha. La Buddha ayatawafir fiha shurutun thalatha. He says that in order for us, for it to be considered through repentance, it is wajib that three conditions are met. The three conditions are met. Al-awwal, he said, Al-nadam ala al-fi'l al He said that Al-nadam ala al-fi'l al Meaning a person remorse for committing that particular sin that you've come with. Remember we said last week, Kullu bani Adam khatta. Or we said a few days ago. We said, Kullu bani Adam khatta. Every son of Adam is a person who makes errors and makes mistakes. Wa khayrul khatta'in at tawabun. And the best of those who sin are those people who seek repentance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, he says, Tawbatun nasuha. The first point of Tawbatun nasuha is nadam ala al fi'l al a person is remorse, he has remorse. They are not happy, she is not happy, or he is not happy in committing that sin. For example, he steals. We ask Allah to protect us from that. I mean, a person steals, and whilst he steals that, he's not happy that he's done that. That is number one. He is not happy. He's not rada bidalik. He's not pleased with what he has done. He's not pleased with what he has done. And this, even if we go back to some of the scholars, you will find. There are there are, there are, kisas, there are stories where some of the scholars let people go when they stole something from them because you find they had, they were not happy. They did this because of a means. They did this because they needed something. They didn't do it because they happy to do. You know, some people have tafakhur, be be masiya to them. Other people have they have they they have pride in in their sins. So they God, you know what I did there? I did to do that. I used to do that. I used to do that. I did that, and they proud. So basically, I think their name becomes high, they rank high, the rank on the street becomes high. The more sins and the more, the, the more of, of issues that you've done, you get ranked high. So that's how they take themselves. So number one, a person, Nadam, al fi'l al And we know this is taken from the Messenger, the Hadith of the Messenger, والسلام, that comes in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, where he said, Al-Nadam, min al-istighfar. He said, indeed, he said, Nadam, he sits, yani, a person who is remorseful, regretting something, is from seeking forgiveness. It's the beginning of seeking forgiveness. So sometimes you might find a person who does something wrong, then shortly after that he passes away. You find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perhaps can forgive. Allah Because why? He's not happy what he done. he's done. So couple, even before he reaches making the tawbah, Allah can forgive him because of why? What's in, the, what's in his heart? He's not happy what he done. But at the same time, is he will be accounted for what he has done. Allah will deal with him because Allah is Adl. Allah will deal with him accordingly now. The second thing we mentioned here from the statements that comes in the book, Al-Azmu ala Adam al-Awdata ilayhi. Now, that a person, he, 
He puts it in his mind not to return back to that sin. He says, I'm not going to do that anymore. And remember I mentioned also on, on Monday, when we did the hadith of Arba'un, no, the first hadith of إِنَّمَا الْآمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ We said that a person makes, he, yani he makes hijrah from those things that are ma'asiyah. Al-muhajir ma hajra bima naha Allahu anhu kama aw kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger alayhi salatu said that the migrator is the one who migrates from that which is displeasing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number two years, a person says, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to look there. I'm going to leave my phone away. Things like that. Because it's creating disruption to my life. It's causing me to come with sins. And this is the month to do that. And this is the month, as we mentioned last week, we said the scholars say, Ramadan Madrasatul Umur. It is the school to change. Shahrul Sabr. It's the school to change. It's a school where you change. People will say rehab, for example. You go there, you change. You cut out the bad habits that you have. This is the time. That's why some of the salaf, they would say, if a person does not change this month, when will he change? Mawsimul khair. It's a month of goodness now. So a person, he announces or he says that I am going to try my best to stay away from that which harms me. So you find also in the fiqh, now, that issues are not haram until we make them haram. As, the, as the, we know the qaida, the, from the principles of the principles of fiqh, kullu shay mubaha, everything is permissible until a delir reaches you and says this is not permissible. So this phone can be halal for me now. But maybe when I go out there, it's haram for me. The things I'm looking at, ask Allah to protect me and forgive me for my sins. I mean, now, so same thing similarly here. Wal anha taman. He says to renounce, to renounce them totally, to stay away from them to, yani totally. So mean that you now you've taken you you've taken the intention that you're not going to do that sin. That's step number two. Number three, you have now left it. So these three issues comprise or brings or complements the issue of Tawbah to Nasuha. It gives you the understanding of what does it mean with sincere repentance. Ma'ana shabab, are you with me? Barakallahu fikum. Fahada shurutu talatha, as the author he said, Fahada shurutu talatha yuqbalu Allahu tawbata an ibadi idha tab. He said with these conditions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the repentance of his servant if he repents. Now we said number one, ayyakla an dhunub ta'amman. He renounces them or he regrets having them. Naam. Wa yazmin fi qalbi wa qararati nafsi ala ya'udu ilayhi abada. And he places it in his mind or her mind to not return back to that sin. This is that month that complements that. This is the month that yani, we can try and achieve that. This is the month we can try and achieve that. So if a person comes to these three things, he will be coming with Tawbah to Naswa. This is what we spoke about briefly, and we spoke of the hadith of Abu Huraira, where the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man sama imanan, man sama Ramadan imanan wahtisala, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Naam, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with full true faith, sincere faith, ihtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous sins. Or kama qala nabina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I'll start here inshallah wa ta'ala from the issue of the hadith of the Masjid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith has some weakness to it. This hadith has some weakness to it. But there's, it's called yani, hadith of Hassan. Hassan, it means that it has some, there's a, yani, the meaning is correct. The meaning, there's other, yani, there's other hadith, a hadith or other other ayat in the Quran is supported to make its meaning strong. For the people who are studying hadith, it's something you learn in mustalah, something you learn in the terminology of hadith. Where you find even if the hadith is weak, there are some narrations that make the, the meaning of the hadith strong. The meaning of the hadith. Now, the hadith here yeah, that the author here yeah, he brings, he says, "Waqala waqad suila alayhi salatu wasalam." This will be beginning today. Waqad suila alayhi salatu wasalam. He said the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam was asked. أي الصائمين أعظم أجرا. He said that 
In other narration it says ayyu, some other narration says fa'ayyu. Who from those who are fasting receives the greatest reward? Ayyu sa'imina a'adhamu ajra. Qala, then the messenger said, Qala, aktharuhum lillahi dhikra. We did speak about this also last week, not two days ago. Aktharuhum lillahi dhikra. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he, when he was asked about this, he said, those who remember Allah the most. Those who remember Allah the most. And we mentioned the statement of Ibn Qayyim last week. He said the best fast is the fast of it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered. And remembrance here, it means many things. It means athkar. It means recitation of the book of Allah, the Quran. Man qara yani man qara kitab Allah, ahabb Allah. Yani whoever reads the Quran, Allah loves this person. And Allah loves this person. So remembrance of Allah, constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, is where you will gain or come with the best fast. These adhkar, remember this, remember the first hadith we took in this book from the narrations of Muawiyah, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa came to the companions when they were remembering Allah, revising about Allah. Remember the first hadith, na? Muawiyah. And then he said, what are you people doing? And he says, Nathkurullah. And we are remembering Allah wa ma manna Allah We are remembering Allah and what Allah has bestowed upon us, meaning Al-Islam. Meaning they were revising on Islam. So also remember, people shouldn't get this wrong. Studying the deen of Islam is also remembrance. Doing the book of fasting, the ahkam of fasting, all of this is remembrance of Allah. And in the time where you, a person is lazy, na'am? whether that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should seek refuge, you know, kasr, min al bughl wal kasr. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al hammi wal hazan. Wa a'udhu bika min al azzi wal kasr. Na'am? The Messenger, you should seek refuge from Allah from laziness. So the time when people are lazy, and it's a time of witnesses and fitna, if the books are being taught in your masajid that is close to you, go and sit in them. If you're free, of course. Sit in them and benefit from them. Because you don't want your Ramadan go where you just sleep in. So you being here, you part of the remembrance. We know the hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, where he said some of the some of this some of the people, ma they have alone. The hadith of Abi Huraira. He said, What are these people doing? And then from there he said, These people, this one he came, but he didn't have intent. He didn't he just came to the dust. He just came to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then from there Allah will write him down as a people who are benefited as well. So sometimes you might come, just have the intention. Sit. And it's others, it means sometimes you might fall asleep. It's tiring, as I always say. Naam? But if you, if you know you're doing nothing in your life, some of us like to make ourselves busy for nothing. We're not busy. We just pretend like to be busy. Naam? So if you come into the dars and sit, naam? inshallah, la Allah, la Allah will feel khair. There's good khair for you that, in that. There's remembrance. And then the hadith that I mentioned now, there's some of the people who come to these gatherings, halummu, and then the angels say, come, benefit from these gatherings. And they said there are some people, when the angels write down, they say some people, they just came. Ismail and them just came. They, they just were sitting down. Then Allah also write them down. Because why? They are from the people who are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this time of Ramadan, where people have masajid, you find the Ahlul Ahwa, they have masajid, the masjids are closed during the day. You find that nothing is happening. Some of them things are happening, not all of them. Now people will say it's just not a refutation on, on, on like in that regard. And um, some of the masjids are open, they're doing maybe ta'aleem and things like that, etc. What they do. Allah kulhad that if these durus are happening, ahkam siyam, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, benefit from them. Because you fall into the statements of this of the companions of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, where you say, Yathkurun Allah. The best fast is the fasting that all the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered. And also it brings peace to the heart. Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'inun qulub. A lot of people are sick, sick in the heart. Allah told us in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 10, He said, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمْ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah is talking of the companion, I mean the, the munafikin, the hypocrites. That they had sickness in their heart. And Allah increased them, and yani increased their sickness like that. So people, everyone has sickness. And the sickness of heart is a very serious thing. Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi and also his teacher, Shaykh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Shaykh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, has a book called Amrad al Qulub. He speaks of the sicknesses of the heart. And also from there, he says that if one's heart yani, is sick, now it's very difficult. Or else, he says that it's better that your body becomes sick than your heart. That's what Ibn Qayyim, Shaykh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah says. Because the issues of the heart affect you in this world and the yaqta. 
As for your body, it will slow you down in this world. You got a flu, it will slow you down a bit for a few days. Maybe you'll miss a few business days or you'll miss a few lessons there and there. Issues that are here. But as if your person has a heart, it is sick, it is dead, none, it will affect him in this world and also in the year after. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُوا إِذَا بُؤْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ Don't these people know when, the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them from the graves and all what is in their heart will be exposed? That's what Allah says. In the day of Qiyamah. So if إِذَا صَلَحَ, ال, إذا صلح الْقَلْبِ صلح, صلح كل شيء. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa told us indeed in the person's body there is an organ. There is an organ. There is a part of a body, a flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَ he said, if that particular, if that heart, if that, if that organ is upright, everything becomes upright. So what cures the, what cures that heart? Remembrance of Allah. And what makes the fast better? Remembrance of Allah. So that's why يعني, we are here cleansing ourselves. A person is purifying himself. يتحير كلوبه يعني They clean, clearing their hearts. Similarly also is that it's khair. The Messenger والسلام, told us, he said to us that let the believing men not despise or not hate or not hate the, yani, the believing sister. For example, not, let, not let a husband hate his wife. Now, perhaps maybe there's a conduct in them, there's a character in them that is good. Look at that. Look at the good. Now look at the good that she carries. And then rather bin her akhar. He says, you, indeed you will be pleased with that. And it will motivate you to love her more. So don't look at the you first. Don't look at her mistakes only. But rather look at the good she carries. Look at the good she carries. The reason why I mentioned this hadith is because looking at good brings good to your heart. If you are only, if you, if you observe in the good, yani you, you focus on the good, it will bring good to you. Hal jazaul ihsan illa ihsan. Is there any reward for good except the good? So when you witness something good, it comes to your heart automatically. When you see brothers smiling, greeting one another, Salaamu Alaikum, you're happy, you can have a conversation with, but you see people are angry, it's difficult for you to go about that. It also brings a mother to you. You also have a defensive shield that you want to defend yourself. Like, you want to show I'm a man, I'm not sure going to show him I'm a man. I'm not going to greet him. Now I'm going to that. So same thing good. So same thing, all of this, it fixes the heart. And that's, what's, that's, that's the duty of Ramadan. That's a duty of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a duty of the durus that we do. That's a duty of the recitation of the book of Allah. So the more you read Quran, the more your heart becomes kifi, shafa'a, wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. Allah told us in the Quran, it has a cure. It is mercy to the believers. So these sittings and these recitations of the book of Allah, remembrance of Allah, kullu hadha naam, is, yani is good and it cures the heart. Naam. وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ أَنَّ الصَّائِمِينَ Returning back to the words of the book. وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ أَنَّ الصَّائِمِينَ يَتَفَوَّتُونَ تَفَاوَتًا عَظِيمًا فِي الْإِقْبَالِ أَلَا ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَعَلَى الْقُرْآنَ الْمُحَافَذَ عَلَى الطَّاعَةِ نعم. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَسْهَرُ لَيْلَ فِي إِذَافَةٍ لِلْأَوْقَاتِ وَتَدْمِيرِ لها. ثم إذا صلى الفجر. إذا كان على الصلاة دخل في النون عميق. وربما إن بعضهم يفوت الصلاة الضور. So the author Rahimullah Ta'ala he says here that Wamina Nas Wamina Ma'lum he says sorry he said it is known as we mentioned last we mentioned this a few days ago it is known that the fasting of the people differ. Muhammad's fast will be different from Isa's fast. Maryam's fast will be different from yani, Fatima's fast. Like that. Hakada. It will be different. Yani, it will be different. Hakada it's like that. And now Allah fadlal Allahu ba'd ala ba'd. Allah favored some of us some. That's how it is. Allah favored some of us some. Some people might find easy in a ba'd. Some people might find difficult. But they keep on trying. And then maybe they exceed in those people who find easy in a ba'd. So same thing he says. Now he gives an example. Now he says that. So here it, as he says that people differ greatly as it relates to the diligence when it comes to the remembrance of Allah. How they remember Allah, they differ on that. With the Quran, for example, reciting the Quran, performing acts of ta'at and obedience, hakada. Then he says, for Fa'adun Nas, he speaks about it. He says, Some people, yes, yes, harf they, they stay awake the whole during the night. 
And this happens to, not commonly in this country, but if you go to the Arab world, you go to Saudi Arabia and the likes, you'll find more people do this. You find even old people, they do sahar. Sahar is something a person who stays up the whole night. I mentioned this before. Now, is a person who stays up, no, yeah, they no benefit. He just stays up, he's there, having a social time with his friends, and they enjoying time, drinking, talking, wasting time. And then the whole time comes, they eat something like that. They don't have a really, they don't really make it bad. They're just wasting time. You understand? Not, not even be with correct brothers, just wasting time. Now, they say it's difficult to sleep at night, especially because it's very hot in the Arab country, so they don't sleep at night. So they make sah. They do sah. Sah is not to sleep. As Allah told us, Quran, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارُمْ وَبِلْ أَسْحَارُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُمْ Now, I mean, the early mornings, there are people who, are, when people mean sah means the person is taking the night prayer. He is He's doing sahr, like he's yastaghfirun. That's why Allah said in the early mornings or in the night, there are people who are doing the prayers. No, they are doing the prayers. So, so sahr is that, sahr is that the person stays up. But what are you doing? Are you doing khair or are you doing batil? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Are you doing good or are you doing bad? Whilst you are up the whole night. So he says some people, they, doing, they, stay, they, they do, they do sahr. And when they do the sahr, they stay up. They take the sahur, for example, they pray the fajr salah, then they sleep the whole day. Hatta yafutu nahum, as he says, Hatta yafutu, yafutu hum, salat al-dur, wa ba'ath ba'ath al-ahiyyan salat al And there's people like that. Especially when it comes to the breaks, the Sunday, Monday, I mean the Saturday, in, in South Africa, I mean the countries of the world, maybe different on the, on the days. You find these people, they sleep the whole day. Hatta yafutu nahum, dur, dur misses them. You find asr also misses them, because they sleep in. Then they wake up, now they're ready for iftar. They wake up, they're ready for iftar. And then we mentioned, we spoke about this yesterday, last week, as two few days ago, where we said that the people differ. The people differ on their fasting. Some people, you find they don't pray, I mentioned last week. Some people don't pray. Salah, they don't know salah. They just want to break the fast, and that's it. Don't tell them salah. Even the time when COVID-19 came, what happened when the people, they were fighting for the massage to be open. The masjid was closed. Now, they were fighting so severely because of Tarawi prayer. Nothing prayer. Nothing prayer. The normal salah, you know, for Yani, they're fighting. We're going to pray Tarawi this year. The masjids are closed. We need to fight against this government. That's what people are saying. We need to get our lawyers and fight with them. That's what people are saying. And they say, Kabali. But the normal salah, you're not fighting for. And Allah, subhanAllah, I remember this is the teachers used to say, SubhanAllah, Allah will ask us on the day of Kiyama. Because people are fighting. For the masjid to be open. Now, they're fighting the masjid to be open. But in the same masjids, the masjids are empty every day. Every day the masjids are empty. Leave Fajr. I'm not talking of, I'm talking about your door, your asr, masjid, yanis. I'm talking, I'm talking in the community of 100 people. I live in a community where there's so many Muslims, where I stay. Now, maybe we're talking of 150 families around us. Go to the masjid, maybe two sufuf, three sufuf. Like that. Salah. Juma, Muzdahim, Zahaba, full. Shabi Barat, Nisfu, uh, Nisfu Lane, Ramadan, whatever, 15 day, Nashaban, full. No parking. You can't, you, you come there, you're like, oh, this guy's a Muslim. Oh, he's a Muslim. You, you see them in the street, you don't know they're Muslims. But these days of innovation, they, are, they flock in the masjid. Allah will understand. So, somebody we're saying here is that you find these people, for things that are unless, yani we're not saying, I'm far, I mean, Doing the Qiyam al-Layl al al is khayr, it's good, alhamdulillah. You have to yeah, do it if you can. It's the day and do it. But I recall that the people fighting for that, whilst the furud salah, they don't come for. But a person says, a tarawi salah, we can't miss the salah. Some people say they have to make khatam. They have to go on the 15 day, 15 days. I mean, if they've, I'm going to go where they finish khatam quickly. Finish five days, they how many mean, five days? I mean, this count. Five, five, five. I mean, there is five Jews a day. Five Jews a night. Five, 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 five. The fourth day they done. Now they, now they visit us now. They taught us. They go to that masjid. Oh, Ismail doesn't read well. Let's go to that one. Juma recites well. Let's sit there. Let's, let me go somewhere like they taught us now. How oh, may I finish my khatam? That's how people take Ramadan. That's how you take Ramadan? Wallah, where is the fiqh of Ramadan? Where is the faham of Ramadan? What do you understand of your Ramadan? That's how people behave. That's how we, that's how people behave. There, subhanAllah. We ask Allah, we ask Allah to guide them and guide us. I mean, Allah kulli hal, this person he sleeps, as the author he says, فَالنَّاسُ يَتَفَوَّتُونَ فِي صِفَةِ الصِّيَامِ تَفَوَّتٌ عَظِيمًا He says the people differ, يعني, 
greatly in the fasting. In the way of fasting, the quality of fast. My quality of fast is maybe weaker than many. No? That's how he, that's what the author is saying. وَلِهَذَا يَنْبَغِيَ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمَ أَنْ يَحْرِسْ عَلَى 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 سِيَامِهِ وَيُكَمِّلْ يعني وَيُكَمِّلْهُ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Let the person complete his fast with the remembrance of Allah because the best fast is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honored and remembered. وَالْإِقْبَالَ عَلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ And he also reaches out to gain piety and righteousness in Allah. وَالْمُحَافَذَةَ عَلَى تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ And the person, he, he observes or he, يعني, he takes responsibility in reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحُضُورَ الْمَجَالِسَ الْخَيْرِ And sitting and gather, sitting in the gatherings of goodness. We ask Allah, this is a gathering of goodness. We ask Allah to make this gathering of goodness now. Attending the sittings of good. والجلوس في المساجد and sitting in the masjid and that's why I always say I'm, I always get jealous for the tulab al ilm you know for the one who can sit in the masjid the whole day I get jealous because at the time we could sit the whole day in the masjid and we could be just sitting the whole day just memorizing the Quran revising the Quran now the time is not on us some of us don't have the time some of us have to go do things now other people they wish so wallahi I really really admire the students that can sit in the masjid they can come and open a book and read with no one disturbing them no stress. The one's calling them 100 times, 50 times. You know, I'm asking them for this, asking for them. You're owing people money. Out there, it's difficult, Ya Shabbat. So, Allah, I get really, really jealous for the people who are sitting. And I ask Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us sincere. And make us from the people that are sincere students in the eyes of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so he says, وَهُذُورَ الْمَجَالِسَ الْخَيْرِ Yani, sitting in the gatherings. وَالْجُلُوسِ فِي الْمَسَاجِنَ Sitting in the masjid. وَيُجَاهِدْ نَفْسُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مُجَاهَدًا عَظِيمًا You, mashallah, tabarakallah, you find some brothers and sisters, when it comes to Ramadan, they take, like what can I say, take leave from work because they want to secure themselves ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this brother, these people have khair as well. And if they, they take time, they say, listen, I don't want any disturbance now. Other people, uh, now I would say, like for me, I don't like traveling in Ramadan. I don't like taking long distance Ramadan. I like to stay in one place. And, um, unless it's darura. Unless it's obviously wajib upon me. No? So it's something that something the scholars taught us. Be busy with ibadah. Other things you'll see after Ramadan, inshallah, if we reach them. Wamin al umur al muhimma. And then he goes into the other statement where he says, So yani, so all of this what he mentioned, the reciting of the Quran, Hudur al Majalis, being present at the sittings, the gatherings of knowledge, Wal Julus fil Masjid, sitting in the masjid. وَيُجَاهِدْ نَفْسَهُ And a person strives عَلَى ذَلِكَ مُجَاهِدَةً عَظِيمًا The person struggles and he gives the best striving to do this. All of this is adding on to the statement where we said the best fast is the fast where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered. وَلَلْأُمُورَ الْمُحِمَّةً بَلْ هِيَ أَهَمُّ مَا يَنْبَغِ أَيْ يَأْتَنِي بِهِ الْمَرْعَ فِي سَيَامِهِ أَيُحَكِّ قَوْلُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمْ مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَكَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ The author, he goes into another issue here He says that from the umur يعني from the most important matters that a Muslim should pay close attention to when fasting is the establishment of the state, statement of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam when he told us in the hadith مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانُ وَاحْتِسَابًا قُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan truly out of sincere faith and hoping to attain the Allah's reward and all of, all of his past sins will be forgiven. This hadith we hear every Ramadan. I think some of us even memorize it because of the amount of times we've heard it. We never need to read Man uh, Ramadan. Uh, no, we didn't. Because of the amount of times you hear in the khutbahs and the lessons, you memorize like that. I think so. Now, I think everyone, no one needed to sit with this hadith. He didn't have to sit in the book and I'm memorizing now hadith. No. The amount of times the Imams, they mention it, was Yak Takfika, mashallah, tabarakallah. We have Bukhari, we have Al-Hafid Al-Hajar here. We have Hakam. We have people who just, hadith just enters in our heart. This is one of the hadith. Wallah, alhamdulillah. Now, man Now, we always hear this hadith. Wallah, and, and that's a problem sometimes. You see, sometimes we hear the hadith so much, we belittle the hadith. I don't want to know it. I know it. I did it in, I did it in uh, Shu'bah. I did it in, you know, just how people are. Wallah, but the man of the hadith, look at the hadith, take the meaning of it and try to implement it. That's the whole purpose of hadith. Do not believe in the hadith. There are some people who don't know this hadith. They've never heard it before. But they go to the masjid though. And the imam speaks about it. But they just don't hear it. Now I don't know how. But Allah wa'ala. But I'm just saying. Like when this hadith comes. Think about it. Ihtisab. Think of iman. Think of sincerity. Ikhlas. 
think of ihtisab, hoping, yani for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor. Ma taqaddam min dhammi min Allah forgives you. I see people looking at the time, if I pass time. I see people looking at the time, why looking at the date? If I pass time. Now we still got time here. We still have time. I see people looking there, there. Now, Allah yubarak fikum. Yambaghi lil Muslim a yasum iman wa ihtisab. Then the author he says, it is upon the Muslim, Yambaghi lil Muslim a yasum iman wa ihtisab. Let the person see, yani fast with sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's reward. And this also gives us one aqidah benefit. I believe in, I mean, in the issue of aqidah. That a Muslim worships Allah with two issues. He worships Allah with two issues, with two mas'ala. Mas'alatayn. al mas'alatul ula, the first one is, a person worships Allah bil raja'a. Hoping for khayr. Hoping for the best reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam told us. إِذَا سَعَلْتَ اللَّهِ إِذَا سَعَلْتَ الْجَنَّةِ عَنِ الْجَنَّةِ إِسْأَلِ الْعَلِ الْفَدُّوسِ When you ask Allah for the paradise, the promised land, ask Allah for the most highest one. You are with us, Akhi. Okay. Taib. Now, so the first point is a Muslim, is the Aqeedah, if you go to the books of Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, the explanation of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, he speaks about this, where a person worships Allah, even the books of Aqeedah, alhamdulillah, even the books of Aqeedah, one, two, three, the books of Aqeedah, now. So, he says, a person worships Allah with good hope in Allah. Hopes for the best. Allah will give him the Jannah. We know the Messiah, Abdullah bin Abbas, or Mu'ad. I think Abdullah bin Abbas, I could be mistaken. When the messenger said, yeah, yani he said, he says, yeah, when the messenger asked him, Atarifu, Allah Do you know what is the right of Allah towards the slave? Wa haqqul ibad of Allah. And you know what is the right of the slave towards Allah? He said, and yani the right of the slave towards Allah is, and wa la bihi shay'a. He should worship him and not associate apart from him. Wa the right of, of from Allah to the slave is. أي لا يعذبه like Allah does not punish him because he has come with a tawheed so same thing here we said the first mas'ala is raja'a you have hope in Allah so if you have hope in Allah Allah if you are muwahid and you come with hope hope in Allah يعني will he will forgive you or he will protect you or he will enter into the jannah that's the first point the second point is the second mas'ala is we should say raja'a صح? the second mas'ala is khawf a person has fear He's not boastful. Me, I'm muahid. Me, I'm muahid. He does not talk like that. He hopes that Allah is between that. A Muslim is between raja and khawf. He hopes for the best. And he fears that Allah can punish him. We know we always mention, Ibn Abi Mulaika said, I drugged to akhtar min talatheena min ashab min ashabi Rasulullah. I met over 30 companions of the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibn Abi Mulaika was from the tabi'een. He said, Kulluhum ya khafuna nifaqu ala nafsi. And he brings uh, Imam Dhahabi brings in his Sira Nam al Nubala. The book is here, I can see it. He says, Sira Nam al Nubala, he says that I met over 30 companions of the Messenger. Alayhi salatu Kulluhum ya khafuna nifaqu ala nafsi. All of these people, they feared falling into hypocrisy. They didn't feel boastful. He says, Hatta kana, he mentions, he says, Hatta kana, an nas yes al Mu'ad. They are, uh, said Mu'ad. They used to come to the companion and ask him, Hudayfa bil Yaman. They used to come to Hudayfa bil Yaman and say, Ya Hudayfa, Al Hasab in Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al Munafikin. Did the Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam account me to the people of the hypocrites? Because the Messenger used to tell Hudayfa. And then he says, He says that a person who, 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 who thinks, or a person who, who, yani, who fears that he's going to be about the Munafikin cannot be a Munafikin, cannot be a, a hypocrite. Cannot be a hypocrite. Because he fears. But as the one who is ah, this one, I, I hate him and he doesn't know. I hate him and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really here. That person, because he, a munafiq generally feels that no one knows his doings. That is the etiquette of the munafiq. We ask Allah to protect us and we fall into them. We ask Allah to make us better. When we fall into them, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our sins. Ameen. So, yani Hudayfa, so same thing here is that Iman. So, we, a person worships Allah with good hope and also with fear. Yani khash, he is scared that Allah, we don't know. He said, Ali bin Abi Talib used to say that when the Prophet of Allah used to come, he said, we fear, we fear nothing. We don't fear anything like the fearing of if our ibadah will be accepted. 
He said, we fear that most. Even when the day of Eid comes, some of the companions would be sitting. And they'd be like, why? What's wrong? It's the day of Eid. They'd be like, we do not know if Allah accepted from us. Hakada kana ashabu Rasulullah. And these were the companions of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Abarraha quluban. They are the most cleanest and purest of hearts. As the Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Musul says, now man kana yastanna fan yastanna, biman katna. Talking of the companions of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Tayyip. So yeah, we're talking about true faith. We mentioned the two mas'alas. We said one, a person worships Allah with good hope. The second one is khawf. A person fears the punishment of Allah and fears, يعني, he, he balances it out. Now, it's upon you to, upon the Muslim, to fast with full iman and ihtisab, hoping the, of the reward of Allah. That is the evidence also. of It's another evidence you can use for يعني يعني خوف والرجاء. شو ما معنا؟ بارك الله فيكم. <تصفيق> أي أن الأهل وإخوان وزملاء صوموا فصوموا ولا يصومك لا لا ينقضي ويقول المضفع أو يقول المفتر. So he says a person fast not because the people should see him. No. And he should not fast because يعني the people should they are criticizing him. He is not fasting with hakada. He should fast. Yani, he should fast with sincerity. He should fast with sincerity. As yani, iman and istisama. And he should seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And Allah subhanahu wa taala, we know, yani, Allah is iman and Allah farad al muslimin because Allah subhanahu wa taala made this fast wajib upon the muslimin. And Allah made this fast wajib upon the muslimin. And we also know Allah promised that a certain reward. For the people uh, who fast, as Allah says, "Wa yasumi ihtisaban, yahtasif sumi li taati Allah." And He hopes for best barakah to Adam. We know what saimun lahum ajrun. As the author says here, "What saimun lahum ajrun adimun, wa thawabun jazilun in Allah." As for the fasting person, he receives a great reward, and uh, yani it's a tremendous reward and a recompense. Allah recompenses them, for and Allah forgives them, gives them much. As we know, the Hadith al-Qudsi. The Hadith al-Qudsi, for the people who are studying Mustalah, al-Hadith al-Bayquniya, you will find something called Al-Hadith al-Ilahi, Hadith al-Qudsi. This is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is other than, which is other than the Qur'an. Now, so he says here, and remember another thing, a lot of people like to say that, a uh, lot of people, when people hear Hadith al-Qudsi, Mubasharatan, people like to, it's just a benefit, side benefit. A lot of people think when, when you see Hadith al-Qudsi anyway, they think it's authentic. Now, so not all, even Hadith al-Qudsi, there's fabricated Hadith al-Qudsi. They are fabricated and weak narrations of Hadith al-Qudsi. Some people say, how can you say Hadith al-Qudsi is fabricated? You say Allah is lying? Some people think like that. Some people say, la la, Habibi, a lot of people made up these things. They made up these things. And that's why Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, in I think in the explanation of, of Arba'un Nawi, or Riyadh al-Salihin, I could be mistaken, I stand to be corrected. He says that the most, from, from all the narrations, the most weakest of narrations that are put a lot are in Hadith al-Qudsi. There's a lot of weak narrations in Hadith al-Qudsi. So there's more weak narrations in Hadith al-Qudsi than actually the, yani, the number of Hadith in Hadith al-Qudsi. Does that make sense, Ayyukha? So there's more, yani, of Hadith al-Qudsi, people have fabricated a lot. Yeah. So it's not like a person saying, no, Allah is, we're denying the speech of Allah. Allah. A lot of people like to say that. And it's a su'ul fam. It is a uh, it's a wrong understanding, no, a wrong perception. Was Saimuna lahum ajun adimun, Wathawabun jazilun in the law, Jalla wa Allah. Wakaja fi hadith al Qudsi, this hadith is authentic by the way, Anna Yaku Anna Allah Yakul, a soya muli, wa ana azibi. Allah said the fasting person, I mean before that, the fasting person receives a word that is good, that comes in the hadith al Qudsi. Now I'm fasting for me, as Allah says, asiyamu li wa na'azzibi. He says, fasting is for me, and I shall reward for it. Allah will give a reward for it. Wahada yubayin adamu thawab sa'imin. This highlights the great reward of the person who's fasting. Wa kabura ajrahum inda Allah. And the multitude, yani the, the great multitude, a great reward a person takes and reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وفي الحديث الآخر يقول إن هذا حديث he mentions لصائم فرحتاني حديث صحيح لصائم فرحتاني 
Farhatun inda al-fitr wa farhatun inda liqa'a Rabbi. Subhanallah. Inda liqa'a Allah, Rabbi. Now he says that, yani, the, there's another hadith also that speaks about the benefits or we can say the virtues of fasting. He says, lisa'im, lisa'im farhatani. The fasting person has two moments of joy. Naam? Farhatun inda fitri. The first joy is when he breaks his fast. He takes the iftar. And we know from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to hasten to break your fast. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, He said the best people are those people who rush to break their fast. One time of course. Time is set in, you break your fast. Some people want to have competition and say, no, I last more hungry, more haka, that is... If you want to do wisal, there's a, there's a fire thing, you're doing the book of Sahih Muslim al Sheikh. You came to the Mas'ala of wisal? Wisal, okay. Wisal is continuous fasting. It's continuous fasting. It's a mas'ala that means that a person is not breaking his fast. It's something that, yani, wisal means that, that yani, a person starts fasting maybe today and he does wisal. He doesn't break his fast. He goes on. He goes on. So, how can I, some of the salaf used to do that. But obviously, that view now is not really a strong view. It's not a majority of the view. Ahl al the fuqaha. But it, yani, we cannot just allow it. It is something that's there. We saw. Because there's Athar. There's Athar. And uh, Badal, uh, some of the companions, I think uh, from them is, it, from, I forgot the names. <coughs> some of them used to do Wisal. And Wisal, continuous fasting. When you start fasting today, you continue. There's some of the companions did Wisal of Arbat Asher Yawman. There's some of the companions, the Messiah, Allah, there's narrations like that. There's narrations where some of the companions, they did continuous fasting for 14 days. But a lot of people, and one of the companions said, it's best they shouldn't do it. Companions said, it's best they shouldn't do it. Other people said, it's best they shouldn't do it. And when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, he said that, don't do the Faisal. And then the, the companion said, but Ante Tawasil Ya Rasulullah. But you do Faisal. You do continuous fasting. He says, he says, فَأَنَّ Rabbi yet imani wa yasqi. He says, my Allah, my, my Rabb fears, I mean, subhanAllah, my Rabb gives me drink and gives me something to eat. That's what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the, uh, his companions. It's the Bible Risala. I think he does come and say, Muslim. If you want to look at it, you can also look at the Bulugh Al-Maram, the book of fasting, you'll find the hadith is there. Um? No, so that's why it is. So Risal is there. So here that, uh, the Messenger did Risal. But here also, it doesn't literally mean that Allah gave him food. But it means Allah gave him strength. Allah gave him strength as if though he had food. And that is from the Mu'jizat Allah. It's from the, the miracles of Allah upon our Messenger Alayhi Asalatu Wasalam. No. So he says, Lisaim, Lisaim, Farhatani, Farhatun in the fitr. And I didn't, people, I didn't say people must go to the Asal. No, don't do Asal. Abdullah ibn Mas'udin, he said he, does not, he, he doesn't advise people to do the Asal because it makes us weak. Remember, our whole idea is also to have some strength for Ibadah. No. That's why even Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he never used, Abdullah ibn Abbas, sorry. Abdullah ibn Abbas never used to fast the, the, the Nafil fast. He said he's to weaken him from doing his. His, uh, his recitation of the book of Allah. So you find it's only fast number one. But other fast, maybe you do the, uh, maybe you do the Arafat, Ahyana. But he never used to fast the Monday and Thursday because he said it, yeah, he took him away from his obligations. He took him away from his ibadah. And remember, if a fast, if the Nafil fast is taking you away <coughs> from your duties as a man at home, it is haram for you to fast. You can't fast. You shouldn't fast. So Abdullah ibn Abbas also says, he says that he never used to fast the sign because he used to love the book of Allah. So when he's fast to feel weak. But only when he comes to Ramadan, he would give his best. But other than Ramadan, he, he, yani, he felt he's falling short in obligations. People shouldn't misunderstand these things now. This is Farhatan. We'll stop here. This hadith, last hadith, inshallah. I see people looking at time again. So we'll stop here, inshallah, just now. This is Farhatan. The fasting person has two. Farhatun in the fitr. Yani Farhatun means that he, is, he, has, he, he receives joy on breaking his fast. Let's not be like the Shia, delay the, the breaking. Not all of the Shia, but parts of the Shia. No. Farhatun in the liqa Rabbi. And also the joy when they meet the Rabb al Alameen. As we know in Jannah, there is a bab. You summa babu al Rayyan. Yet fihi man al Sa'imin. There's a door in Jannah. And that door is called al Rayyan. Who enters the door? The fasting people. Or kama qala. So he says, the fasting person is two joys. The joy of when he breaks his fast 
and the joy when he meets Allah. We know from the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the belief from the Aqidah of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the belief of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, the belief of the companions, the belief of the Salaf al Ummah. What in we will meet Allah, we will see Allah on the day of Qiyam. We ask Allah be from His people. Innakum, as the Hadith of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said, Innakum satarawna rabbakum yawm al Qiyamah. Indeed, you will see your Lord on the day of Qiyamah. Now, this Hadith needs to settle in one's heart. Allah. He may have seen Allah. This is a great reward. Innakum satarawna rabbakum yawm al Qiyamah. There are scholars who, when they speak of the hadith, they cry. Because this is Azim Akhi. Innakum satarawna rabbakum yawm al Qiyamah la tuzamuna fi ru'yati. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam told us. He said, Indeed, you're going to see your Lord, your Creator, the day of Qiyamah. لا تضامون في رؤيته. We do, if we do أصول السنة, all the books of Aqidah they speak of this issue. أصول السنة, شرح السنة, all of them speak of this issue. Indeed, you're gonna see your Lord in the day of Qiyamah. So here, فرحة إن لقاء ربي. We will be joyful when we see our Lord. As the Messenger, some narrations, the Messenger said, كما ترون هذه القمرة. He says, like you see this Layla al Badr on the late on the night of Badr. He says, like how you see this moon clear. Nothing is going to be blocking you. And that's the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The belief of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. They will see. Because the reason why scholars emphasize on this issue is because these groups have broken from Ahlul Sunnah. And they say, we, Allah cannot be seen. They say, Allah cannot be seen. But the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, told us, as Allah told us in Surah Al-Hud, O Yunus, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Those people who do good, they have extra. And then extra, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did tafsir on his ayah, he said, رُؤْيَةِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ He said, this is the scene of Allah, this extra. Look, doing good, ya ikhwa. Just doing good, and it shows an act of good. It gives you, ranks you very high in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We be from the people. If we come with good, we be from the people that will see Allah on the day of Qiyamah. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Those people who do good, they have extra. The Messenger ﷺ said, زِيَادَةً here, the extra here, means رُؤْيَةِ الله. It means seeing Allah. Some of the Asha'ira and some of the people who broke up Ahlul Sunnah, they said that when the Muslim and this, the, this, these people here are comparing Allah with the Kamar. Remember the Messenger said, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ, يوم, يا رب, إنكم ستترون ربكم يوم القيامة. And indeed you will see Allah on the day of Qiyamah like how you see this Qamar. So I said, look at these people. They, 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 yani they say the Qamar is like Allah. That's what we say. No, but we, Ahlul Sunnah is saying, Ahlul Sunnah is saying, we are comparing Ru'ya bi Ru'ya. Mean the scene, not the Qamar. Ru'ya means to see. We are comparing the scene, meaning you will be able to see Allah like how you see this Qamar. Allah told us in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ there's nothing can be example to him. I think it's Alim, Basir. And he is the all hearing and the all seeing. For the person who fasts, he is he's joyful and we feel that. Wallahi, we feel that. We, when we break our fast, we feel happy. We feel joyful. And also, when we see Allah, or when we meet Allah, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَى رَبِّي if a person wants to meet Allah when Allah is pleased with him, let him come with righteous deeds. Good actions. Another thing also, important point, last point. Important point now, is that a lot of people who strive to be upon the sunnah, from the things we belittle a lot is good character. From the things that we belittle a lot is good character, good mannerisms. And this is something we really need to work on ourselves. All of us. We need to work on ourselves. The sisters need to work on it. The brothers need to work on it. The fathers need to work on it. The mothers need to work on it. Everyone needs to work on this. And this is the month where a person builds their character. It's a month of sabr. And it's shahu sabr. Benevolence. You be good to the people. And the people be good to you. Allah told us in the Quran, Wa ahsin kama ahsin Allahu ilayk. Do good as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done good upon you. So be good to the brothers, be good to your family, to your husband, to your wife. No? Be good to your brothers, your sisters. A lot of people belittle this. And this is the month we need to work on it. Good character, Allah. We know the Messenger told us that indeed, what did he say? He said, indeed, 
يعني the person he said uh, subhanallah but he spoke of best, best, best character he said indeed that uh, the the best the المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم أخلاقا and also the book Imam Ahmad brings in his book also the sunnah he speaks about this imagine the book of Akhira he speaks about characteristics you go to the point of usul al-sunnah, the foundation of sunnah of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, you find this issue there. He says, ah, يعني أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم أخلاقا أو أحسنهم خلقا. He says the best people with the best of iman are those with the best of character. That's why Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi said, the one who beats you with character, indeed is beating your religion. The one who surpasses you in character, indeed surpasses you in religion now. I will stop here being the night time. My, inter- my intention was to finish this book today and I didn't finish the book. So we're going to continue next week, inshallah wa ta'ala. Uh, I think the last, our last lesson. Then being the night, I think we'll have two or two or three lessons before the end of Ramadan. We'll maybe do that, da- da- inshallah. The book of Dua. Barakallahu fikum. Khair inshallah. Allah yibarak fikum. Zakum Allah khairan. Subhanak Allahumma. Wa bihamdik ashir wa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.